Hi, um, this is the second part of the two part videos on how I set up my MIDI controller for fast editing. Um, this is going to be a bit longer uh, because we will have to go through some of the idiosyncrasies of how to set it, how to set this up. Um, you can see here my Behringer controller. These are available for about $100 used. Uh, and my X keys, I actually um, back then bought this uh, new to a program Patty. This was the start of Patty basically to use this. Um, everything I will do here in a second on um, oops, the webcam. Everything I will do here in a second on this, we could also do by mapping on the keyboard. Um, uh, what I showed you in the video is that when I hit um, something here, uh, for instance, I want to go to noise reduction. Lightroom here on the screen changes to the noise reduction panel, and my barrier controller changes to the preset associated with this panel. Such that when I move here is actually my noise reduction, my first um, noise reduction slider. This is my second one. Oops, we need a bit, a little bit here. This is my second noise reduction slider, um, and so on. Um, in case you didn't notice this, uh, by the way, if the first one goes to zero, this goes shifted, uh, switched off here, and the sliders here actually also go to zero. And this works for basically everything. Um, for instance, here we have the post crop and yetting, and then my sliders are the post crop and yetting. So how did I set this up? This uh, looks kind of interesting, right? Um, well, the first thing to notice is that Lightroom here is in solo mode. So only one of these panels is open at the at the same time. Um, if you don't know how to do this, uh, right click down here, um, click on solo mode, and that prevents, uh, that, that opens only one panel at the time. If you have one open, open the other one. Uh, you can see what's happening here. Um, the tools open on top of it, which is a bit annoying if you ask me, but that's just the way Lightroom works right now. So you can see here the tool opens on top of the basic slider, but be that as it may. Um, the second thing, obviously, uh, I had to program my MIDI controller. And I really, uh, I'm going to post my settings online again because I think they're now pretty well developed. Uh, my first uh, preset, the Behringer has uh, 32 presets. My first preset is my development basic, which has here temperature, tint, exposure and so on, the first sliders, and up here it has um, clarity, vibrance, and so on. And each of these buttons here is set for uh, remember the last temperature, which is one of the core functions in, in PADI that, you know, is worth mentioning that we actually remember uh, what was the setting before the last change, and then this button here is set to reset for all these sliders, and the button on the controllers up here is actually set to reset. So that's my first is development basic. Um, then I have the tone curve set up here. You can see my tone curve sliders. Uh, brush and tools. So the way I set this up for me is that the first couple of sliders here are the brush and the filter, uh, exposure, etc. settings. Uh, noise and sharpness, uh, which the first sliders are actually noise. The second sliders are um, sharpness sliders. Uh, that's just the way I have set it up. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, uh, saturation, hue, luminance, black and white, uh, PCV and grain, lens correction, split toning, crop, and then and so on. That's many, many up the way to 15 right now. We have sharpening again, such that the first couple of sliders here are sharpening, and I have sharpening reset buttons and so on. Now, what what I used to have to do is I used to have to sort of remember what is what. So when I switch on the on the bearing I hear it would say lens collection, split toning, crop spot, uh, and I have to go all the way to oops, all the way to sharpening. And then if I want to go back to basic, I have to go all the way, way back to basic, which was really annoying at some point, as you can see once you have that many sliders. Plus it doesn't rotate, so it doesn't go below one. Sorry about this. It doesn't go below one. It doesn't go to 32. So that was kind of annoying. Um, so what I did now in the latest version, you are able to associate certain presets with certain tools. So the way this works is in um, our bearing menu here is associate presets with tools. Duh. Uh, you can see crop tool, spot removal, red eye correction, etc. So my basic panel here, for instance, is associated with preset 1. Tone curve, preset 2. Hue, preset 6. And you see I wasn't you see how this developed for me over time, that this is not necessarily a nice order here. Um, it just sort of happened. Sharpening ended up at 15, just because of how I did this. Camera calibration at 14, my crop at 12, and so on. But the point is, you take, you say, okay, whenever I go to a basic, to the basic panel, I want to go on the bearing to preset 1. Whenever I go to noise reduction, I want to go to preset 4. Okay. Now, 
This doesn't uh, yet, I should say, work when you just open a panel. That's the ultimate goal. But uh, what does work is when you associate, and I'm going to go to the driver, to the driver list, when you associate certain keys with the command go to that function. So for instance, basic here is associated with go to development basic. Uh, noise is associated with go to noise reduction. And now automatically Patty now, vignette, vignette, automatically Patty now, if you set this command to go to the PCV and you associate it PCV with the preset on the bearinger, Patty goes there uh, and automatically opens the panel on the side. So, you know, now I hit noise, I go to noise, and this is my noise reduction slider. I hit the vignette, I go to the vignette, right? And everything else is just cream on the crop. So the fact that uh, my second level here on my X keys switches the vignette on and off, just to see how it goes, uh, or this one resets it, my third level, that I, I just set that on the um, on the X keys. One thing I like about the X keys is that the, the way we have set it right now is we have these two levels. So for instance, this one goes to vignette, as you can see, this one toggles the vignettes on and off, and the third level here resets all um, of the PCV. I, that's, that's just sort of the, the way it's set right now. So um, to me, that's the fastest way to do things. I just hit something, I go there. Uh, it doesn't prevent me from anything else. It also works for uh, things like the filter. So my first, you know, this is these sliders are now for the filter up there, despite the fact that my um, basic panel is open. Um, and I automatically close now the, these tool panels if I go somewhere else. So if I go now to tone, it actually closes that annoying tool panel. I find it very annoying personally to have these several panels open up there. I uh, yeah, just had a little snafu in my screen capture, so there was a cut there in the video. I apologize for that. Um, what I wanted to point out is that, that uh, the other th ways I have set up my X keys, for those of you who are interested, for instance, I have the targeted adjustment tools here, uh, which, which I love. So here's a target adjustment luminance, uh, and you know, you can, this is obviously stupid in this picture, but you can, you can adjust it here. Uh, I have my left and right panel here and here, so this is my left panel toggle. I have set it up as a toggle. You can also set it up as just open, force open. Um, personally, I also like the setting where I see the full screen. Um, with no panels, um, just the just the film strip down there. That's how I typically add it because, you know, my I can still switch to development basic. So or say to something like a post crop vignette, and I can still change it with my sliders. It works pretty well. I have zoom here, zoom in, zoom out, um, and then previous and next pictures are here. So very often I don't even touch the mouse at all if I don't need to do a filter or an adjustment brush to uh, to uh, work to edit my pictures. So hopefully that helped to show you how I set up my uh, my paddy for the newest version such that I can do these quick jumps. Uh, and if you don't have an external keyboard, again, don't worry about it. Um, you can just simply go, let me switch off the full screen here, go to paddy, you can just simply go um, and say on your keyboard, um, as I said, many people like something like control on the, on the numpad, to go LO navigation, go to develop, and then let's say we want to go to basic. Okay, so we have the setup now. Let's go somewhere else. Uh, Control 7 brings us back to basic, and it does exactly the same thing um, as we did before with the, um, with the with the X key. So you can do this on the keyboard. It works really well. Uh, I love it. it. It really increased up my speed, and for those of you who are professional photographers, which I'm not, uh, I'm sure you will love the setup, which is really reasonably cheap, right? It's a Hundred dollars used here, um, you know. If you don't want this, so that's that's all you need. Patty's free, although I do appreciate a donation. Uh, at this point, I can't even afford the next version of Lightroom from the donations I received. So, if you use this as a professional photographer, if it saves you hours worth of time, um, maybe I can convince you to contribute a bit to the continued development of this useful tool. Thank you very much, and have fun.